When I say that I'm being blown away by the artificial intelligence in photography that we're seeing today, I don't know that I can actually project that in the way that I would like to, because I don't know how I feel entirely about it. But there are some things about the abilities in things like Photoshop or Luminar that I think are fantastic. Now, I think there becomes a fine line between artificial intelligence and the actual user themselves. Take Luminar, for example. Luminar is a software that back when I think Luminar 3 was out that I actually promoted here on the channel, and I used it pretty regularly. But as they started updating into Luminar 4 and Luminar AI, it became more about the artificial intelligence and less, in my opinion, about the user experience of actually being able to create things manually or in like that, that analog sense. But one of the features I'm seeing a lot of people on YouTube talk about that Luminar AI has is to make a really nice bokeh in the background or to really just blur out the background of a photo of like a portrait or something. But Photoshop has that capability too. So if you're already using Photoshop, you can also use it as well. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So let's jump over onto the computer. So once you get an image open that you want to apply this effect to, what you're going to do is go to a filter and you're going to go to these neural filters here. And there's a lot of different types of filters you can get. There's some for landscapes where you can turn them from summertime into wintertime. I've had some good and bad luck there, but some of these other filters deal with portraits. And the one we're going to be looking at today is called Depth Blur. So what you could do is actually control a few different features here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this on. The focal distance is set at 25. The focal range I have at zero, but I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Focus Subject as well. And currently the blur strength is at 50. Now it's going to take a ridiculous long amount of time for my computer to process this. Depending on how fast or slow your computer is, it might take you a bit too. So let's sit here and wait together. Kidding, of course, with the power and magic of video editing, here is the final image. So this is what Photoshop came up with using its artificial intelligence for this particular image. And I think it did a fantastic job. So if we were to actually zoom into this image here, we can kind of see how it's actually doing. You can see that the lines that it's cut out here are not too bad. Now, I do have a problem with uh, my wife's hat here. You could see that it is blurred out. Maybe it thought it was one of the cars in the background. It did a great job on this side, but this side of the hat is a little bit too blurry and maybe that's not the best there. But what we can do is maybe just bring this blur strength down just a little bit and let's go to about 35% and see if it does any better. So even going to the 35%, I'm still not entirely happy because of the fact that this part of the hat is kind of out of focus. Now, if you are using natural bokeh and effects through your aperture, say taking a photo with a certain really fast lens, like this would probably be maybe what, like a 1.4, 1.8, something to that extent, or you're just zoomed in. At this point, I don't even think it would be a 1.4 here, maybe a 2.8. But unless you have like an ND filter, you're not going to get those super fast apertures at this setting. So what you could do is get more of like a telephoto lens and stand really far back and kind of zoom in that way to pull in the background, but it's still not going to get that overall look. So here's something we could do. You know, even this car here is not entirely out of focus. But even though it's not 100% perfect, the artificial intelligence going on here and the ability for us to manipulate images like this. So I think I was watching a video, Peter McKinnon was talking about this in the realm of uh, uh, Luminar. And he was saying, you know, Maybe this doesn't necessarily replace a $3,000 lens, but you're still getting the look of a $3,000 lens. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do this on something I'm going to make a massive print of where people can really see those fine-tuned mistakes. But just to share something on social media, say Instagram or something like that, this photo is fantastic for that. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is layer one, and this is without. So this is just a straight-up image out of camera, and then bam, there we go. Now, there's another way we could go about this without using the AI, we could actually do, well, I mean, technically we're still using AI, but you could go to select subject, create a new layer with that subject. And in theory, you could just blur out the background of the image to create some type of look and see it's still, it's not really finding her hat very well, even with this select subject. So let's just go on in here a little bit and we'll just kind of create our own little mass. So we'll just kind of make this a little better. I'm not going to do this 100% perfect because I just want to kind of show you, you know, for tutorial purposes today. This is Chad's really quick way 
of making sure we include this mask in the details. So there we go. Okay, let's make sure we got everything that we want. Looks good enough to me. Hit Command J, create a new layer with the subject. Now with this background layer, just to make sure we don't destroy it, let's create a copy of that layer. Then let's go to Filter, Blur, and then we let's just find something. Let's just go for Lens Blur and see what that looks like. So what it's gonna do is pull up this dialog box for us, and then we're gonna get to determine how much we actually want this blurred out. I'm just going to go with this just for the sake of going with it. Now you're going to notice a problem that we would probably have to fix with some masks and it would take a lot of time and it's just not very fun. But while this is applying this lens blur, let's go ahead and make sure that happens and bam, there we go. There's some amazing bokeh. But what we have going on here is all this is blurred out and that really should not be. So at this point, we'd have to create a mask. We'd have to go to our brush, get a nice soft black brush and just kind of paint away some of this scene. Now that's just extra steps that you really shouldn't have to do. And obviously, there's still going to be some issues like around her arms where we did the cutout. It's just going to take a lot of time if you want to look really good with it. Now let's go ahead and cut these layers off and cut this back on. And that looks pretty dang good for how Photoshop did it automatically. And now I'm actually noticing because of that last uh, little trick that we did that the hat is even messed up in this part here as well. So that's something to think about. Maybe in certain scenes or circumstances, it's going to look better than other scenarios. But the power of AI in these photo editing softwares are becoming amazing. Now, I typically go by the rule of thumb that I want to create stuff that's going to be realistic. So for example, if I'm going out and shooting a mountain scene in the particular day that I go out there and maybe it's a location I can only go to like one time, but the sky wasn't very pretty that day, I don't have a problem changing that sky as long as it's something realistic. So for example, if I shoot a mountain range and I know for a fact that the sunrise will never happen behind those mountains, I'll never change out the sky to show a sunrise, something that can't naturally or physically happen. But if the sun sets over there, I might throw in a pretty sunset and vice versa. So there are some limitations I put on myself as a creator with a particular image because I want to showcase realism. If I I want to show something that it's not very realistic, I will do that. And I do that a lot with my self portraits. They're surrealistic portraits. They're supposed to not look real, but I don't want to lie to or manipulate the people that are viewing my image. And it's just like here, but I don't view that as something that's happening with this particular type of image or the purpose that we're actually doing this. What we're doing here is mimicking something that maybe, uh, has a better look, but we just don't have the gear or technology. We don't have the gear to do it. We definitely have the technology. And, you know, I don't see a problem with that. But yeah, take it as you will. This is something that exists in Photoshop. And if you didn't know about it and you want to use it, then you're welcome. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comment section below if you've tried this out, if you've tried any of the neural filters that Photoshop has, and what you think about them. Let's talk about it in the comment section below, and I'll catch you on the next video. And as always, be sure to create something new today.